Hi, so um, we end with a much better look, but I just realized after I ripped the eyelashes off my face and threw on some PJs that I forgot to film my video intro. So hi guys, welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new BH Cosmetics Weekend Vibes Collection. Guys know for some odd reason, BH Cosmetics holds a very special place in my heart. I don't know why, I just like the stuff they come out with. So if you would like to see me swatch all of these babies, tell you what is worth it and what is not because that's what happens and just keep watching. Looking a bit pale at the moment due to the lack of color on my face, but before we get into playing with the palettes, I did want to talk about the collection really quickly. So like I said, this is the Weekend Vibes collection. What I'm getting from these are like brunch themed vibes. Super cute. I am a luxury high-end makeup lover. I love me Charlotte Tilbury, Pat McGrath, all of the fancy stuff, but there is something about BH that I really enjoy. I don't know why. I just think they have really cute stuff and it's really great for the value. So I stand by BH because I know not all of us have the money, especially right now, to afford a Charlotte Tilbury palette. And I do want to advocate that BH Cosmetics does have really really good products. I did pick up all of the palettes that came out in the Weekend Vibes collection. In the collection there also is a brush set. I did not need any more brush sets but that is right now 20% off for $22 and then there is also a lip gloss duo which is $9.60. I've never tried their lip gloss formula so I can't speak on that but what really stood out to me of course were the palettes. So I picked up all of them so that I could talk about them with you guys. The reason why I really purchased the entire collection was because of the avocado toast palette but in the collection palette wise there are two 16 pan eyeshadow palettes there's also a six color blush palette and then a six color baked bronzer and highlighting palette and honestly I thought all of the palettes were super cute so I don't regret purchasing all of these right now and this is when I bought them the day they released as well they were 20% off I'm sure there's extra codes you can tack on on top of that so each of these palettes were 14 40 each which is very affordable and each are $18 without that extra sale. So let's get into the eyeshadow palettes. Like I said there were two that came out. The first one is Avocado Toast and this one is near and dear to my heart because <laughs> Your girl loves avocado toast. And then, of course, we have the mimosa. So the avocado toast, not only do I just enjoy eating avocado toast, but this has a gorgeous green color story. And I love BH because I really enjoy their formula as well, not just their marketing and design, which, by the way, A1, and for the price to get this cuteness, but also this is a green color story. So I knew I had to get this one, and I knew you guys were excited for this one. And then mimosa, now this is very on trend, with the other palettes that are coming out. Mimosa is just this really hot pink kind of palette. These colors are coming out like crazy in other palettes. So if you're into the hot pink kind of trends, this is great. If I didn't have a YouTube channel, I probably wouldn't have picked this up. I'm not huge on hot pink shadows and honestly I have so many from what has come out recently. But this is a great affordable way to get your hands on a hot pink palette. And then you have a pop of orange and a pop of yellow and a pop of white. But other than that, I think the colors are very close to each other. I'm going to use the avocado toast in the demo today because I know that's what you guys are most excited about and so am I But I have to speak on the mimosa really quick and I feel like a lot of the colors are very close to each other uh, So this one isn't my favorite. I just don't think there's enough variation in the color here I appreciate a palette where every color has a purpose in the palette and they do something different to a look for this I just feel like a lot of them run very close and especially if you put them on the eye There's just not going to be that much difference I mean if you love a hot pink eye you have endless options here the mattes felt really great But what I was disappointed in was the shimmers I'm sad to say that I think BH has a really good handle on a really good shimmer formula But for some reason I found the majority of these to be a little bit Chunky and a little bit more sheer and just there would be pretty over the lid but they didn't pack a punch like some other shadows I have experience with. By the way all of the palettes do come in a sleeve but you don't need them. Throw that away as soon as you get it. Not surprising but 10 of these shades are pressed pigments which are technically not eye safe but really it just means that they will stay in your eyelids and you know what if you have very sensitive eyes that can be an issue and be irritating but I don't have problems with pressed pigments but 10 of these which is not surprising are pressed pigments because 
because there's just so much hot pink in here. But listen, I haven't tried this on the eye. If you like this color story, maybe give it a go. It's only $14.40. The shade that really stood out to me was this pop shade. This shade was absolutely gorgeous and all the mattes felt fine. I just thought they were close. Personally, I would pass on this because the avocado toast I'm really excited for. But if you like this color story, you have that option. But something about it seemed a little bit off to me. But let's, let, let's get into the good one here. We have the avocado toast palette. I mean, who doesn't like avocado toast, right? And the color story is just scrumptious. And in here, I actually feel like there is enough variety in this palette. The colors aren't really too close. And this is a unique color story. There's not a lot of brands that have the guts to come out with a really green palette. And also something different that I noticed from the Mimosa is these are really good shimmer shades. I was disappointed when I swatched the Mimosa. And then when I got here, I was like, all right, this is the shimmer formula I'm talking about. If you like green tones, this is really great. You have some other fun pops and the swatches in here were awesome, especially for the green. I didn't feel any Thing was really chalky or anything like that. No swatching doesn't give you everything you need to know, but just as somebody who's has like hundreds of eyeshadow palettes, I can tell how shadow is gonna be by a swatch, and so far so good. So let's zoom on into the eyes. We're only gonna use avocado toast today because I just I want to do it. All right, so we got this side done. You know I had to do just a vomit of green on my eyeball, and I love it. Now you can go a little bit more wearable with certain shades in this palette, but I just wanted to go full on green. And honestly, when I was working with this palette, I was getting some similar vibe to the Melt Smoke Sessions palette. Now there aren't dupe for dupes, I would say for the most part, but if you kind of like that vibe of having like a more brown green olive kind of look, but also having the option to do a more blue green, which is what I went for today. You kind of get that between the two. But let me show you how I got this look. If you don't know, I do this eye first so that I can really explain how the shadows work for this eye. It just, I can be more informative that way with you guys. So the first shade that I went into was Over Easy and girl, I love an Over Easy egg on my avo toast. But anyways, Over Easy, it's a little bit more of a muted yellow. I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed in this shade. I'm not super in love with it. It's not too different from my skin tone. I think we need colors like this in a palette and I think it's a good color to have in the palette, but it's not what I was expecting. I wanted a little bit more color from this, a little bit more pigmentation from this, but as a background shade for transition and just kind of pulling everything together, it does the job, but it doesn't really show up on me and I'm not here for it. And then I went in with Avo Toast right here, just this brighter green. By the way, as I was looking at the back of the palette, there is one pressed pigment. Honestly, I'm not sure which one it is. I'm imagining it might be guac, though I'm not sure, but the, the mimosa has 10. This one has one. So if those pressed pigments concern you or are irritating to you, this one has only one. And this is a good shade, by the way. Shows up pretty nicely. It's blending very nicely. And then I'm going into ripe. And I did this to test how different these two would be if they would show up to basically be the same. And no, they don't. I'm happy to report they definitely do hold their own. And that's how you can kind of tell if the shadow quality is good or not as well. And as you can see, the colors, they're working for me. They're doing what I tell them to. They're going where my brush goes. And they're not overly powdery of a texture. See, I love the The shadows are bomb. Like, don't at me. They're, I mean, you know, they're not luxury, but fire and super cute. Okay. And then the next shade I'm going into is guac because I wanted to add that blue green element. I'm also just very energetic today because I've been working all day and normally I film in the early afternoon and it's like six o'clock now. This has been the busiest week for me as far as distance learning because all of my grades and assignments are due and I'm chasing down 200 children, but yeah, it just feels good to come in and film. Okay, but yeah, you see? With ease, these colors can go very wrong, but they are going very right for me. I'm also going to take Avo Toast, that first color that we use right here, putting her right down here. You can see how nice and pigmented she is. Also love that the packaging here is avocados with a mirror. I'm all over the place. I know this isn't my uh, typical format, but I just wanted to casually film this review. I'm taking guac that blue green. By the way, the refer number 14 brush is the best brush in the world. And then I wanted to add some depth to see how this shade Pit worked out right here. It's just a dark brown. And I love how this blends into the blue green shade at first. So I was like, Ooh, we about to get muddy up in here. But as I blended it, it actually fit into the look 
quite well. This is a Morphe 507. Sorry guys, I'm the worst at telling you what tools I'm using. It just perfectly adds some depth. I was very close to doing a cut crease and going the extra mile for you guys, but I didn't. <laughs> I just didn't have the energy. But uh, the first color that I went into was green juice. Honestly, from swatching, this was the prettiest one, if you ask me. Well, I took this on my wee little finger and I, I picked up my nails. <laughs> but anyways, I'm taking it on my finger and look, you can see this is such good quality. It's showing up really nice and beautifully and this color, you guys, stunning. And then the next color that I went into was Extra, which is a little bit deeper. Every single one of these mattes are this really smooth, creamy formula, not chunky. The Mimosa just had a lot of like wannabe lid topper formulas, which actually made them super chunky. This one ain't playing no games. They they have pigmentation, they have shine, they're very, very smooth. See how pretty? Take a brush and just kind of work it in to the look. And then I wanted to play with some of the lighter shades. So we're gonna go in with lemon pepper right here. And lemon pepper is going to go into the inner corner, but I'm just using it to lighten up this area to add a little bit more dimension to the eye. And then I'm going to take Avo Cuddle, which is the lightest shade, and that's going to really add the pop of that inner corner color. And you guys, this by the way, all over the lid with a green in the crease would create such a bomb look because it's so shiny and glittery. I mean, you just saw for yourself how easily the quality of this worked for me and how beautiful the colors are. So I'm gonna do liner and lashes and we'll be back to play with the other face palettes. Let's add some color to my face, you guys. <laughs> so we're gonna start off talking about the Belgian Waffle Baked Bronzer and Highlight Palette. So in this guy, you're getting three bronzers and then Sorry, <laughs> you're getting three bronzers and three highlighters. The highlighters swatch very smooth. They felt really nice. The bronzers didn't feel too bad either. This color right here, Maple, is beautiful on deep skin. However, there is not a bronzer for deep skin at all. If anything, I think this is great for fair to light skin tones. You could maybe make this work on a medium skin tone, but I don't think this is quite as inclusive as they were trying to make it be <laughs> with this color right here. Like this just kind of checks off a box for them, but they did not hit it with the bronzers at all. And this shade's really, really light. So if you're very fair, maybe you could work this as a bronzer. I'm gonna try it today to clean up underneath the bronzer and see how that works. So I'm gonna start off with the shade Batter. The warmest shade in here is going to be Cinnamon. Batter is a little bit more neutral and I'm very intrigued by Buttermilk. I'm using the Refer number five brush and I just dip that into the middle shade, which is Batter. And I'm going to apply this right out here. And yeah, this is just like a nice, Nice color. It's blending out fine. I mean, I would much rather go for other bronzers, I think, but this certainly got the job done. And now I'm going to go into cinnamon right here and see what we can do with that. I'm trying to see if there's anything really interesting about this palette. Ooh, this is a little bit orangey on me. I guess because it's so much different than my skin tone, it also is blending out a little bit patchy not the greatest i mean it does blend out and fix itself i mean this says there are warm and cool tone colors which is just what i said yeah we got nothing really uh interesting here but oh i much prefer batter as a bronzer though cinnamon isn't bad but it's warmer than I prefer and I just find batter to be a little bit easier to work with. I'm not overly impressed with the bronzers in here but I mean they got the job done for sure. I'm going to take the butt end of my Kaleido sponge. We're gonna dip that into buttermilk. Okay, that's a little bit orangey on my skin tone. This isn't necessarily highlighting my face. For me, this color is virtually unusable because it's a little bit warm. Can't really use it to set my skin. Can't use it to highlight. If you're pretty fair, I mean, the fairest of the fair girls, this might work for you, but I just think this is an odd color. If you have more of a medium skin tone, you can actually use this to highlight. For me, that doesn't really work, but the, the colors are fine. And then for blush, I do want to dig into this beautiful Bellini palette. You guys also seemed very interested in this. And in here, you're getting six very corally shades. The shades were more sheer when I swatched them, which absolutely is not a problem at all because they are blushes. You don't want them to be crazy with pigmentation. All of these blushes, kind of the same when I was swatching them. Obviously the shade was the brightest and this was the most unique from all of the others. But as we get into these more mid-tone shades, it kind of looked the same 
on my hand. So let's take a gander at swatching these on the cheek. So I'm going to start off with Georgia Peach, the lightest shade. And I mean, this is really going to cater to somebody with a fair skin tone, but... Ooh, that's a really pretty nice soft blush. As we get brighter with the blush, it's probably going to clash with what I'm wearing, but that's okay. We're going to use Peach of Cake right here, this beautiful peachy kind of color. Tap off the brush. This is a completely matte formulation. I'm not getting any sort of sheen from this, which is a good or a bad thing. I'm a gal who likes a matte blush because I can always go in with a blush chopper if I so desire. Ooh, this is really pretty. So the formulation is fine. It's not a buttery smooth formulation. It's not, you know, my Charlotte Tilbury's by any means, but it adds a nice amount of color. I'm going to take a little bit of Peach Please, which is this brighter color, a little bit more obnoxious as you can see, but this is going to be what shows up on on the deeper skin tones. Honestly, I think these will do pretty well on a medium to deeper skin tone also. I think the tones and depth that they had in here wasn't bad. It's just all of the shades are kind of the same, honestly, and I don't really think they're going to differentiate too much on the cheek. I'm taking some of just peachy. Yeah, I know I look ridiculous right now. Your girl goes ham with a blush palette, but they are, they actually do apply quite pigmented. So use with caution and they blend out pretty well, but like I said, they're not the best blush formula in the world, but they certainly get the job done and I'm not mad at it. I'm going to take a little bit of powder because I always go to ham with my blush reviews because I get so excited and clash in with the eyes a little bit. So I'm going to take some of my Huda Beauty powder, press this right on top. And then we're going to dig back into the Belgian Waffle Palette and we're going to play with the highlighters. I'm going to just pass on maple because this is very clearly not going to work for me, but I'm going to put powdered sugar and syrup on different cheeks. So I'm using a Kaleidos H1 brush and we're going to start off with syrup right here. And this is more of like a golden -y shade and we'll see how this... So this is pretty much a typical highlighter formula for them. It's very, very beaming and it will emphasize your texture a little bit, but it's very, very pretty. It spreads out nice and this is not a bad highlighter for me. It doesn't leave a cast from what I can see in it blends in pretty seamlessly. Uh, this is a formula that I personally find doesn't last too long on me unless I'm wearing like a really beaming color. And then we're gonna dip into a powdered sugar here. Let's see what this looks like. Again, probably should use a lighter hand. You know, it's not a breathtaking formula, but it is really pretty. And if you do uh, like blinding highlights, this certainly does what it's supposed to do. And that powder sugar shade is definitely brighter than maple syrup and I much prefer this shade right here but both are really really pretty so I'm gonna finish get myself together and then I'll come back with my final thoughts on each of the palettes you guys it is humid as ever outside my hair she's suffering even within the walls of my own house all right so I do have some opinions on the palettes that I'm excited to bring you. We'll start off with the kind of stars of the show. Here we have the eyeshadow palettes. Obviously, if you couldn't tell, avocado toast, stamp of approval for sure. I really enjoyed it. I love my look. It's very vibrant. I played with the most difficult colors to work with and they worked beautifully. The mattes blended beautifully. The shimmers are bright and just gorgeous. And if you like green, this is a great palette to go for. And I just think that there's something really nice with this palette. It's a good one. And if the colors interest you, I don't think you can go wrong with this palette the mimosa now take what I have to say with a grain of salt because I haven't put this on the eye and sometimes you just need to do that but just kind of comparing the way this felt compared to the avocado toast palette and just with the experience I've had in the past I'm not thrilled with this one I think it's 1440 it's worth the money if you really enjoy the color story but I just, it's not as good as the avocado toast I can tell you that just by swatching it the shimmers are a little bit lackluster in my opinion that's not to say you can't get a pretty look with this you absolutely can I just think a lot of the colors are really similar so you're not going to be able to get as many looks out of this palette as you can compared to the other and like I said you can get beautiful looks with this I'm sure the mattes are going to blend beautifully on the eyelid but from what I can tell it's just not as good as the avocado toast the Belgian waffle palette I do have mixed feelings about this palette I think it is okay it's not knocking my socks off by any means but the highlighters are pretty they work nice and the contour colors are okay I can't get much use out of this. The shade's a little bit too orange for my preference and you can really tell that it's not the smoothest blend from this palette but I do have 
to take a step back and remind myself that this is a palette that is $15. And for $15, if you're looking for an affordable option containing these types of products, this is good for sure. You have some variety and this is the type of palette that I would take on vacation because I'm not too worried if something happens to it. It's good enough for me to use it and rely on it. Is it a favorite item in my collection? No, but she is super cute. Same thing kind of goes for the Bellini palette. I was excited for this when I saw the photos online. I love a good blush palette. I just think too many of the colors are too similar. It's not a bad formula. It's not the greatest formula, but a blush is a blush. You can make it work. And if you like the colors, you know, a palette like this is worth picking up. Yeah, it's just not that the, the colors are just too close to each other, in my opinion. I think this Georgia Peach color is absolutely stunning. I really like how this would look on a more medium to deeper complexions, but when you get to these mid-tone colors, it's the same thing, you know? I just, I just gotta tell it like it is. So, I mean, overall, not every product in this release is fantastic, but y'all need to try this palette because this is fantastic, and these aren't bad. If they are catching your attention, I don't think you're going to regret purchasing them, but just for me, my needs, my collection, probably could have lived without these, but as a collection, these are super cute and I'm about to take some bomb product shots with these. So that is all I have to say for today's review. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it. I have one more week left of teaching for the school year and then I will be full time as YouTube for my summer job. Let me know if you plan on picking up any of these palettes and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.